as far as what we suggest for preparation, it is almost always true that students try to do absolutely everything in the universe, thinking that it is possible for them to read every book and memorize every word on every single page. And really, I personally think that works against you in the long term. I believe that you should choose one source per subject. And that means if it is Pathoma, if it is Boards and Beyond, if it is a textbook that you particularly liked as you were studying the process in medical school, whatever it is in that particular subject that sort of met your criteria for engaging your mind and making you think about the topic, then that should be the one that you study from. And you should not do what I find so many students do, which is entirely fill their desk with book after book after book on the same subject, so that you're wasting your time simply looking at things from a slightly different direction on a different location in the page. So figure out what you like, perhaps speak to students who have done this before you. Um, I, of course, will put in a shameless pitch for the website that my colleagues and I are developing that we call Medical School Companion. And our notes will be up on that website when we finally get it completed. The combination of using questions and content is one that you should use over and over again. In other words, you're gonna study some content from a book, then you're gonna go to a bank where they have questions online, you're gonna practice those questions in a timed way, and then go back and see how you did on that particular material. And I'll talk more about how to divide the questions up. But remember that it should always be true that answering a question drives you back into the content to study more. Because a well-constructed question will make you think, and it's likely that the first time around, that would not be your natural thought process. So you're going to learn something from that question, which you're then going to go back into the content and look at it again with a different vision of how that material fits together. Now, everyone always talks about first aid. And so I wanted to have a few words here about that book. Um, I'm pretty certain that first aid has made it to India in a significant way. Um, years ago, students in India and abroad when I taught typically didn't know what it was. But it is a tome that has increased in size over the years. When I began back in the dark ages of time, it was probably maybe about a half an inch thick. And at this point, it's almost two inches thick. So it has significantly increased in size. And because first aid is written by students who have taken the exam, it is an authoritative listing of what those student authors have seen on their exams. Okay, every year they hire a group of students who got good scores on the exam and they ask them to write down everything that they can remember that they saw. And that material goes into a list form in the book. Now, the problem with first aid, I just told you the good things about it because it gives you the topics that are tested. But realize that it's not a teacher. It's actually not going to explain to you how that material needs to be thought of. It's simply going to give you a list of topics that are tested on the exam. So it's certainly extremely useful. And when you consider that it is written every year by students who just finished their exams, there's nothing that is more coherently focused on exactly what you're likely to see. But that said, remember that the exam questions themselves are going to test you on your understanding, not on the list. So it gives you a roadmap 
to think of how to study a particular topic but it does not actually tell you how to think about that material. And so when you use first aid as a roadmap, you then have to make certain that you are always asking yourself the question, so how does this actually work? And can I explain that particular phenomenon the whole way from the patient back to the molecular details of what is going on in that patient, okay? And it's not going to teach you the material. And I also like to tell people, although this might be a little scary to you at this point, realize that there are mistakes in first aid. Because it's written by students who don't necessarily have the same content depth of knowledge as one of your instructors in medical school or one of our faculty here, it's true often that they will be, there will be a sort of superficial view over something that has sort of inborn errors in it. So I always look at first aid as a list reminding myself that I truly need to make certain that I understand that list and can explain it in full detail, okay? Now, one of the big problems that students have with this is reaching the point of feeling as though they have just nowhere to go. And if you are using the technique that I asked you not to use a few moments ago, which is to stack up books on your desk, then it's really very easy to come to the place where you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, I'm so far away from the score that I want right now. How can I possibly manage to bring up my numbers so that I will actually get a good enough score to get that prized residency that I'm working for? And the key is actually that less here is more. If you notice the poor donkey in this picture, he's really not going to get anywhere pulling that load. And so it would be much more efficient to take about, about three quarters of the material off of that cart so that the poor animal could actually move forward with that information. And then as that happens, take a couple of trips through that same material, but not try to do it all at once. And the psychology of this exam is arguably as important as the actual content that you are teaching yourself to go through and practice with questions.